Welcome in guys. Thanks for hopping into this AAI mining tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial series slash long video, I'm not totally sure yet. Uh, I'm going to teach you guys how to uh, set up multiple miners, multiple haulers, automatic uh, mining, zone assignments, automatic zone clearing. Uh, each one of these little code blocks up here we're going to probably focus on individually. And we're going to show what each one does and eventually you should be able to build yourself an AI mining setup that will absolutely smoke any other method. Okay guys, uh, feel free to skip this part if you're just interested in the tutorial. But real quick, we're just going to do a quick analysis on why it's worth it to do this method of mining over vanilla or other mod methods. And let's just jump right into it. I set up some a little comparison here uh, with the vanilla tier three speeds. Um, you can get about seventy nine thousand ore per minute on the very little one, which is not bad by any means. Uh, it's pretty good. And the next one is going to be the space exploration one. This is going to be with the large drills from AAI uh, and the tier nine speed modules. And this one is quite a bit. Uh, faster 178 percent more or per minute but um in terms of just the total raw crafting hour time these tier 9 modules are insanely more expensive than the tier 3 modules so you could set up something like this but realistically anybody who's played space exploration enough would know that like using tier 9 modules like this is just stupid so let's go ahead and look at AAI statistics. So this is crazy. So this, so to make eight of these, you know, it takes 160 of these modules and whatever it takes to make the haulers, which are very cheap. Um, you know, you can just see it's, it's almost double the speed of vanilla and that's limiting yourself to only eight of these miners. I guarantee you could comfortably double the amount of miners on this patch. So, that's just a quick analysis before we jumped into the tutorial on why it's worth to do uh, this method of mining. And let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. Alrighty, guys. So we are just about to get ready with the tutorial. But uh, before that, I did just want to go over some basics of how the vehicles work. Uh, how we're going to be reading data about uh, certain vehicles. How we're going to be sending data to vehicles. Um, just really the basics of the mod uh, and I think if you guys can understand that a little bit better with my analogies uh, I think that'll really help the rest of these tutorials um, kind of lock into your brain a little bit better so let's get started with first the miners signals and what all they do okay so if you click the mining vehicle here it will open your inventory but it'll also open this little side panel over here on the left hand side of your screen um, so this unit ID number so for the mark one miners this is ID number one this vehicle is unit number one so if you were to place um, say another one of these you'll note that this one becomes two this one becomes three and it just kind of uh, does that you know as you place them so that's this is really important this is how we're going to be um, figuring out where this miner is, where uh, it's going, like what instructions we're going to be sending to it, all sorts of stuff. Um, this is just the unit ID number. So this is like how many IDs there are like in existence. So it looks like I have about 15 vehicles placed in my world. Uh, next is going to, I'm going to go into this in just a second, but this is just going to toggle the AI state. So this will, um, having it on red will basically treat it as a standard vehicle. There's no, uh, it won't take any instructions or anything like that. So the unit data is what's interesting. So this unit data is basically, uh, you can see all these negative ones, which basically just means we're going to keep mining any of these until, you know, we're full like there's no stopping condition basically um and then these positive values these are for fuel so if this little miner 
were to drive over this vehicle depot um, and there was uh, like say 200 wood in this depot, it would actually pull 50 wood out of the depot into the miner's inventory. So you can set whatever kind of fuel you want. Like if you want to use nuclear and you want to make sure that it always has, you know, maybe 10 fuel on it, uh, that'll work. So setting um, this unit data to 10 every time it drives over here, if there's 10 nuclear fuel in here, it'll pull it up and keep it for itself. So that's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to dive into this a little bit later. Right now, it's not super duper important. Uh, I just wanted to kind of get you, mostly we want to focus on this, the unit ID. That's what we're going to be using first. Uh, and next, let's go ahead and look at reading data from a miner. Okay, so one of the first problems with automating a vehicle and making it basically work autonomously, uh, you have to know where it is. You have to know uh, where it is. You have to know how it's doing on fuel. You have to know things about it pretty constantly. And that's where this really handy station called the unit scanner comes in. So how this station works, uh, let's go ahead and give it a input. So if you'll recall that unit ID data, um, we're gonna go ahead and use that now. So remember that this has uh, Mark one AI miner ID number one. So we're gonna go to the signals and we're gonna pick uh, the Mark 1, not the Mark 2, not the Mark 3, not the Mark 5. It has to be the Mark 1. It has to exactly match. So we're going to output one of that type ID. So we're sending it signal 1, and now this is going to look. It's going to say, hmm, okay, let me find that unit. So it looks like it's found it. And now it's outputting all, this, all, all these different signals. You don't need all of these. Uh, we, we're only going to probably be interested in like three or four of them. So I'm probably not going to bother uh, spending much time on the ones that we're not using. The really useful ones here are the coordinates, like the X and Y signals, if you see them in there. So Y is 97, uh, X is negative 126, um, just stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, so that's going to be the basics for reading data. And I'll show you what we can do with that in just a second. Okay, the next uh, thing we're going to touch on is how to send and receive data, like instructions to the miner. This is called the unit controller tower. Uh, and let's just dive in how to use it. I'm going to have our miner do the very simple task of go from where it's currently at to somewhere in the center of this uh, ore patch. So I just ran a little command here to determine that the uh, coordinates here are X negative 144 and Y 99 uh, roughly. You can use these uh, further decimal points with the X and Y subtile uh, signals, but I normally just stick to the whole integer uh, coordinates. So let's do that. It's very simple. So X is negative 144. So let's go ahead and send X negative 144. And we're going to send Y as negative 144. Oops, or not negative 144. What was it? 99. We're going to do Y as 9 or 99. Cool. So this is on. So it's transmitting. Those keen of you in the audience have noticed that it's not working because we haven't told it what unit we want this to do. So let's go ahead and send it to 1. And look at that. Our miner has <laughs> run out of fuel, but he was just about there. So that's pretty good. Okay, guys. So the next part uh, we are going to focus on is this little guy called the tile scanner so this is a really uh, really handy little station uh, what this does is it reads tiles aka um, these little things these single squares uh, and it tells you information about them so I've given this signal um, or this tile scanner the signal for X negative 144 and Y99 and it's giving me data about that like how much ore is there uh, what kind of terrain it's on, like is it water, is it uh, land, you know, all this, val all this valuable information. Um, so that's one way to use this, is you can give it a direct coordinate, or what you can do is you can do um, a distance signal, so let's say 10. So now this is going to scan around itself in a 10 wide um, area, and it's going to just rapidly... 
uh, here. So let's, it's going to just rapidly spew out the information, right? So if you want this to go faster or slower, you can control that. So you can click here and this tick frequency, you can think of this as um, how many ticks it takes for the next mode of instruction to happen. So there's 60 ticks in one second. So if I set this to 60, it's only going to flash data about the next tile every second. So here's information about this tile. Here's information about the next tile. Here's information about the K plus two tile. So that's, that's how you can use this. So this is the zone scanner. So this is going to work very similarly, except the difference here is, um, also let me just, uh, show you what a zone is real quick. So a zone is basically you can just kind of define a zone as these little shapes right uh, and this is just kind of helpful for uh, defining where things are so uh, you can see here it's kind of hard to see but I have a green little um, zone marker on this tile right here so if we set the zone scanner to look for tiles of that uh, zone so it's found one, so I only have one tile of that zone, and it's found it, and it's telling me information about it. It's telling me where it is, it's X and Y coordinate. It's not telling me what's under it, it's just telling me where the zone is. So that's what these two stations are. Very, very helpful. We're gonna learn a little bit uh, more about these later, and we're gonna use these later on in the tutorial. Okay, so that's all the basic towers that we're gonna need for the rest of this uh, part one of the tutorial. Uh, we are going to now build a very simple little circuit for our miner to follow. What we're going to have him do is we're going to have him go over here. We're going to have him mine on a little copper ore mining zone that we're going to define. We're going to have him mine until he has a certain amount of copper. We're going to have him come back here, drop the copper off, refuel, and then continually do that. So let's just go ahead and get building. Next up, we're going to be bringing out the unit controller. So it's pretty self-explanatory what we're going to want to do here. So if we have less than 5,000 copper, we're going to be outputting a green check mark. Or in English, we don't have enough copper yet, go to the mine and continue to mine some more. So we're going to want to send the miner to this coordinate here, right? So let's go ahead and send him there first. Oh, forgot the unit ID. Simple things. So we're going to send him there, right? Awesome, awesome. And now we want him to be able to go back, right? So let's disconnect this one and connect him over here. Awesome. Now he's going back over to here. Cool. So this is good. Um, he won't fully mine it with this setup. Just a heads up, guys. Uh, this is more for demonstration. but So we get the idea. We want him to go here if there is no check mark. And we want him to go here if there is a check mark, which is... So I have set that little circuit up. So what this little one is going to do is if we have one check mark, it's going to let everything at its original in input count through the circuit, which it is currently not. If the check mark equals zero, it's going to do the same thing, which it currently is zero. So it is currently instructed to go back to the, uh, the depot, which it currently is at. So now we just need to feed it the information from the miner, which we can do with these green wires so these signals don't overlap. And now he's going back here. Excellent. So our miner has arrived here and you've noticed he has stopped moving, which isn't great. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get them to continue moving because these guys do need to be moving in order to mine. So we'll learn that in the next tutorial, guys. But for now, I just want to demonstrate that if this guy does get... Oh, this guy can't even hold 5,000. <laughs> no worries. Let's just shave it down a little bit. So now if he does have more than 1,500, he's going to go back here. And you'll see that he should hopefully empty it when he gets here. Which he's not going to do. Okay, so he was just not emptying his ores because we forgot to tell the station to pull ores from him. So let's say pull out 1500 ores. So you'll just, you just noticed that it is going to cons consistently pull 1500 ore if it's available. So it will continue to pull out um, ore out of the tractor. All right, guys, that's probably going to do it for the first tutorial. Thank you so much for checking it out. And, uh, Feel free to leave a comment down below if you're stuck on anything. I'll try to get back to it as soon as I can. And uh, in the next tutorials, we're going to cover uh, how to control multiple units at once 
how to keep them moving so they don't stop mining. Uh, just really, really cool stuff like that. So be sure to check back for a new video whenever I make it, guys. I will see you later.